I am Anil Kumar. In this particular video, we will do derivation for half angle formula for tangents. And then we will solve this particular question, which is if cos x equals to minus 3 over 5, where x is between pi and 3 pi by 2, find exact value of tan x pi 2. So that becomes half angle. So we are familiar with three formulas which could be used here. One is we could write tan x by 2 equals to plus minus square root of 1 minus cos x divided by 1 plus cos x. So that is one formula which we are familiar with. Another formula which can be used is tan x by 2 equals 2. Now this formula involves plus minus we also have formulas which do not involve plus minus. In plus minus at times you have to work out which sign to take. Now this is a better formula. We could write 1 minus cos x over sin x. Or this expression could also be written as sin x over 1 plus cos x. So these are the three formulas which could be used to solve the example which we have. Now, so I'll do their derivations. So here we have this particular formula, tan alpha by 2 equals to 1 minus cos alpha over sin alpha, which is also equal to sin alpha over 1 plus cos alpha. But we'll begin with the basic formula, which is, tan alpha by 2 as plus minus square root of 1 minus cos alpha divided by 1 plus cos alpha. Now that is a standard formula which is normally used. So we'll start with the compound angle formula for cos. So cos A plus B can be written as cos A cos B minus sin A sin B, correct? So it could be written as cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. If I write A equals to B, then I can say cos A plus A if I write A equals to B. So at this stage, I am writing A equals to B, right? So, so we get cos A cos A minus sin A sin A. That becomes cos 2A, right? equals to cos square A minus sin square A. So this becomes a standard formula for cos 2A. And this standard formula of cos 2A can be written in two different forms. If I write, let's say sin square A as 1 minus cos square A, in that case, it becomes cos 2a equals to, writing sin square a as 1 minus cos square a, gives us cos square a minus 1 minus cos square a, right? Then, we get minus 1, and here we have minus and minus becomes plus, so we get 2 cos square a minus 1, see? So cos 2a becomes 2 cos square a minus 1. So that is the second formula from the same. These are double angle formulas. Or we could also write cos square a as 1 minus sin square a, right? So we could write cos square a as 1 minus sin square a. In that case, we can write cos 2a as equal to, writing this as 1 minus sin square a gives us 1 minus 2 sin square a. Is that okay? So I just cut down on one step at this stage and I'm making this as the third formula. Now these three are double angle formulas, right? So these are called double angle formulas. Okay, 
Now, if I make a substitution, that is to say, okay, let me rearrange or do it, or, okay, so, so we could actually rearrange first and then do the substitution. So let's rearrange and write what cos square A is from here. So we can say 2 cos square A equals to 1 plus cos 2A or cos square A equals to 1 plus cos 2A divided by 2. And if we square root, we get cos A as square root of 1 plus cos 2a divided by 2 with plus and minus sign. Do you get an idea, right? So basically, we have written a in terms of 2a. We can do the same thing for the third formula, rearranging for sine square a. We could write this as 2 sine square a bringing it to the left side, this to the right side, makes it 1 minus cos 2a, right? So 2 sine square a is 1 minus cos 2a, sine square a equals to 1 minus cos 2a divided by 2, and sine a is plus minus square root of 1 minus cos 2a, divided by 2. Correct? So, we can find A in terms of 2A. We can find A in terms of 2A, right? So, we are working with these two formulas. Let me rewrite these formulas here. We have sine A equals to plus minus square root of 1 minus cos 2A divided by 2. Correct. To get half angle formulas, we do another substitution. That is, we can say that 2a is equal to alpha. In that case, what will be a equal to? a will be alpha divided by 2. You get the idea. As soon as I do this substitution, I can write sine a as sine alpha by 2. So we get here sine alpha by 2 equals to plus minus square root of 1 minus cos alpha divided by 2 square root. Similarly, for cos A, the formula is cos A equals to plus minus square root of 1 plus cos 2A, right? Divided by 2. If I do the same substitution here, so in terms of alpha, I can write this as cos alpha by 2 equals to plus minus square root of 1 plus cos alpha divided by 2. So as far as the half angle formulas go, this is for the sine, that is for cosine. Ratio of these two will give us tan, correct? Tan alpha by 2 is basically sine alpha by 2 divided by cos alpha by 2. And so we can write tan alpha by 2 as plus minus square root of 1 minus cos alpha divided by 1 plus cos alpha. So that is the formula which we have just derived. So I'd like you to go through these steps and understand how we have found this particular formula, right? Now let's look into derivation of this very important formula. Tan alpha by 2 equals to 1 minus cos alpha divided by sin alpha, which is also equal to sin alpha over 1 plus cos alpha. So to begin with this time, we'll begin with what is sine a plus b equals to. Sine a plus b is sine a cos b plus 
cos A sin B. Now if I replace A with B with A, I get sin A plus A equals to sin A cos A plus cos A sin A. That is to say that sin 2A is equal to 2 times sin A cos A. Correct? Now here, if I make a substitution, that is, if 2A equals to alpha, then A will be equal to alpha by 2. So I could write 2A as alpha, so I get sin alpha as equal to 2 times sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2. Perfect. So we get one relation of uh, alpha in terms of half angles. Now, the other expression which we are going to derive now will be from cos 2a. So we just derived the formula for cos 2a as equal to 1 minus 2 sine square, right? Let me rearrange this so we could write this as 2 sine square a equals to 1 minus cos 2a. Now here again, if we do the same substitution, that is to say, if I write 2a equals to alpha and a as equals to alpha by 2, in that case, I could write this as 2 sine square alpha by 2 equals to 1 minus cos alpha. Correct? So I get another equation here which we'll use to find that relation. So as you can see here, we have one minus cos alpha as two sine square alpha by two and sine alpha, sine alpha as two sine alpha by two cos alpha by two, correct? So we have both these terms. So let me now derive the formula. We'll begin with the right side. That is to say, I'll begin with 1 minus cos alpha divided by sine alpha. Now 1 minus cos alpha is equal to 2 sine square alpha by 2, right? Is equal to 2 sine square alpha by 2, correct? From here. Let me call this as equation number 2 in this case and let this be equation number 1. Sine alpha is 2 times sine alpha by 2 times cos alpha by 2, right? So here we can cancel one of the terms and rewrite that as equals to 2, 2 also cancels we really get sine alpha by 2 divided by cos alpha by 2, which is nothing but tan alpha by 2. So we have shown that 1 minus cos alpha over sine alpha is tan alpha by 2, right? So let's rewrite the formula which is written there as tan alpha by 2 equals to 1 minus cos alpha divided by sin alpha. If you multiply this by, let us say, 1 plus cos alpha over 1 plus cos alpha, you will get this formula. Is it okay? So let that be an exercise for you. For the time being, we are going to use this formula to solve our question, which we started with, right? So. So our question is right there. So we'll now solve that particular question. You can use any formula, but I'll prefer to use this one. Since here, we have simpler calculations, right? So let's do it. 
So I derived all our formulas and I hope you understand how we got all these three formulas. Now, the simplest one to use is, of course, 1 minus cos x over sin x it results into tan x by 2. So that is what we are going to use to solve this particular question. Now, what are we given? We are given cos x as equals to minus 3 by 5 and x is in which quadrant? It is in third quadrant, right? So let us sketch this. So if you look at it, what we are given here is cos x is minus 3 over 5. So that means minus 3 like this. And 5 means a triangle, which is right there. So the point is that kind of like this, right? So that forms the triangle. where this side is 3, this is 5. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can find that side also, which is 4, right? And, you know, this angle here is somewhere between pi and 3 pi by 2, right? This is pi and this is 3 pi by 2. And from our rule, we understand that both sine and cosine are negative in quadrant 3, right? All are positive here. Sine is positive this quadrant. Tan is positive here, cosine. So both sine and cosine are negative. Well, how did we find 4? Let me write that also. Using Pythagorean theorem, right? So this side was 5 square minus 3. 3 square square root which is square root of 25 minus 9 which is 16 right which is equal to 4 right since it is moving downwards we'll treat this as negative 4 right this is negative 4 and this point is negative 3 do you understand correct now since we are in quadrant 3 we are very clear that both sine and cosine are negative cos x is given to us as minus 3 over 5 and sin x as calculated from here will be minus 4 over 5, correct? And therefore, tan x over 2, which is equal to 1 minus cos x over sin x can be written as 1 minus cos x is minus 3 over 5 and sine x is minus 4 over 5. So we could take common denominator or multiply both by 5. So what we get here is 5 minus minus becomes plus 3 and the denominator we still have minus 4. Right? So when you multiply by 5 then in the denominator we get minus 4 and that results into 5 plus 3 is 8 divided by minus 4, which will give us minus 2. So we get our answer that tan alpha by 2 is minus 2. Right? So that becomes our answer. Answer is tan x by 2 in this case is equals to minus 2. It makes sense because x by 2 will lie where? x by 2 will actually lie somewhere in this quadrant, quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, tan value should be negative. So minus 2 is the result. So I hope you appreciate how simple it is to use this particular formula. No square roots. And we don't have to bother about plus or minus sign. Feel free to write your comments, share my videos and subscribe. Thank you and all the best. Thank you.